Hello everybody and welcome to Tech Uploaded. I'm Chris and on this week's vlog I'm doing something a little bit different. We're talking cameras, lighting, audio equipment, and editing software. So I've been getting some requests from people wanting to know what kind of equipment do I use to do my YouTube videos. And I got a really boring laser printer in. Actually I had to order a new printer. So it's like a $40, $45 brother laser printer, something I would never unbox on the channel because quite frankly it's really boring. But then I was staring at the box and I thought, you know what? This is a prime opportunity to kind of walk through all the different equipment that I use, how I use it, and then how I edit things in post, and kind of maybe answer some of these questions that I've been getting, and just put a video out there for everybody, because that's easier than typing. So, it's pretty long, so I'm not going to take any more time. Let's get into it. Here's an overview of how I do what I do. All right, so it's Thursday, and it is a super nice day outside. Love it. Yesterday was the total opposite, super stormy. So it's nice to have it be nice outside. And you know what, I've had a few people ask me, how do I record my videos? Could you show a, a walkthrough of what you do for each one of your videos, what equipment you use, things like that. So, you know, I thought instead of making a separate video, why not just throw it into this week's vlog and use this really boring unboxing as a demonstration. All right, so here's what I'm gonna unbox. This is the HL2240D laser printer by Brother. Yep, they still make stuff. All right, so first off, here's the table that I do a lot of the unboxings on, and this is a really not a very stable table. I need to get a better one, but this one I kind of like using because it's really scratched up already, so I don't care if I tear it up when I'm doing builds or anything like that. So that's kind of nice. Plus, it's wood, so I don't have to worry about, you know, transferring any kind of electrical shock or anything like that. And then you can see in the background here, this is all the different stuff that I still have to record and do. Uh, so the NAS build is still there. Finally got the hard drive in for it. That's what held it up from being done last weekend. Uh, so that's there, and then uh, then I've got three flash memory sticks, 16 gigs, because they were buy two, get one free, and you can never have too many of those. And then this is what I like to call my box of crap. This is all of the stuff that I carried over, kind of blocking it with my own shadow from another build, so I just throw it all in the box until I need it again. And then here's everything. This is that uh, other computer that I still need to get with my buddy on to get put together once he gets his parts in so we can combine them. And then uh, that is a workstation Z97 motherboard. Uh, that's gonna be part of an editing build I'm doing for another project. All right, then there's lighting. So this, this is actually a really cheap light kit. I think I paid like 35 or 40 bucks or something like that for this kit. Uh, I got it with a green screen, which I never use. I actually took it to work, just used to do resume photos for people because it was a solid background. So I turn those on and they do take a little while to warm up. So I like to get them going, um, you know, ahead of time. So, whoa, I'm really freaking with this camera's white balance and all, all kinds of stuff here, but look at that. All right, so and then there's more stuff over here, kind of a mess. And then while we're waiting on that, here's the camera that I use. Now, this is a Sigma. Uh, I believe this is the 17 to 50. Yep. And I like this lens because it's a constant aperture, so when you zoom with it, your aperture doesn't change, which is nice. Your focal length stays where you want it to be. It's got autofocus and manual focus on it, depending on what you're doing. Uh, then it does have optical image stabilization, which is nice. Now, this is about a $550 lens, but compared to what you would pay for something else, like a Canon lens, it's almost a half as much. And it does come with the lens hood, which is nice. And I do have a filter on the front of it, so I don't scratch it. And this is, of course, the uh, Canon EOS 70D. And I went with that because it has really good autofocus. So I'll give you a demo of that now. So what I do with the camera is obviously turn it on. You'll notice that I actually have a uh, cable. Let me see if I can show the cable running down from the camera uh, down to the floor and into an outlet. I bought, this was really overly expensive, but I bought the actual Canon, the ACKE6. Uh, and this allows me to actually plug the camera in which is nice because I don't like swapping batteries. It was like a $110 accessory though, which is really overpriced, but what are you gonna do? All right, and then there is the screen. Now, what's really nice about this particular camera is, let me try to get it so you can see it happen in real time. So right now it's focused in on the printer, but if I put my hand in front of it, it focuses on my hand. Now watch, it goes right back to the printer again. Uh, using a T5i or another one that does autofocus, it really just can't compete with this. So what am I at now? I'm gonna try to, I'm at 17, I'm full out. So if I zoom in really close here, you kind of see I can tell it what I want it to zoom in on, so I'm gonna, or focus in on. So there I'm telling it to focus in on the box, but now the tree's out of focus, so now it's gonna focus back in on that. Uh, I wanna say no. 
So now it's going to focus on that. Tree's out of focus. Focus back on the tree. So it's really, boy, this is hard to do and hold the camera at the same time. But yeah, you can just judge, you can change it on the fly, which is really nice. And it just does a fantastic job. So let's do the recording. How do I do it? Well, I've got myself mic'd up. All right, now this is the giant squid lavalier mic. You can get this online directly through them for about $40, $45. And it's really nice because it doesn't require any kind of phantom power and it does have a decent quality for the price. Uh, I think I'm probably gonna upgrade to an Audio Technica that I can actually like magnetically pin under the shirt at some point here, but that's a $200 mic. So for getting started, this one's actually really nice. And then that goes into the Zoom H4N. Now this is a really nice field recorder and I'm mean, actually gonna need to power it up here. So uh, everything on it's really well built. It's kind of, uh, it's got like a metal body to it. So I've dropped this a few times and it's been just fine. Uh, so you turn it on, hold that button down and it boots up. The boot up time on this is a little bit long, but it's a really, really good audio recorder. You can do XLR inputs, which is nice. It's balanced XLR, uh, or you do have the um, external microphone port on the back, or you can just use the built-in mics, which are actually really good quality as well. So then when you're ready to go, you just take out the lav and it's all, there we go, and plug it in to the back. And then when you're ready to check, you can actually turn monitoring on so you can plug in some headphones on the side to monitor, but you just uh, hit record once and it'll actually show you uh, where your levels are. So I now to switch it back to mic because I was on XLR before. And you'll notice that uh, you know you can kind of see where you're at. You can also adjust it there. I like to keep it on 40 and then take things up in post because I don't want to blast off. Now, if you really get too loud, uh, which I'll do by actually tapping on the mic, it'll start blinking. It'll let you know that you've, you've gone way over. So you can kind of keep an eye on it that way as well. But that's, you know, I like to stay around negative 12, negative six. And that's pretty much where I get on the setting at uh, 40 for the gain. So there's that. So you get all that set up, get the camera set up. Uh, now the last step, let me unplug for a minute here so I don't drag this thing to the floor. The last key component here is I need to make sure that I'm not blowing out uh, on my levels. So what I want to do is actually check. You can hold down the focus button. It'll tell me I'm way, way too bright. Uh, I need to scale that back. And I know exactly why, because I was filming in the dark before. So I can go up here and go to my ISO. And right now I'm at like, yeah, 1250. And I probably need to scale that back to like 320 or maybe even 250, probably 320. And then what you can do is you can do that focus ring again. Yep, still a little hot. So drop it down to 250. See how that looks. And we're right about where I need to be. So then I walk around and make sure that I'm in the frame. And it's a good thing I have good eyesight because this is actually really hard to see from back here. But I just make sure I'm in the frame on the camera. And as long as I am, then I'm good to go with the review. I probably need to move it up just a little bit. And uh, so what we'll do now is I'll actually just start recording and I'll leave this running as I do it as well. All right, so what I'm gonna do at this point, and the audio's gonna be really bad until I get mic'd up into field recorder. So I'll do that now. And then you'll hear the big difference in audio when I make the jump over. So now, um, stop it there, switch to the mic, and check the levels, check the levels. Make sure I'm at 40. Always double check, double check, double check. And then I'm gonna record. So now I'm switched over to the field recorder and then there is a uh, hold button. So now I can hit all kinds of keys on here and it's not going to stop the recording process. And I can kind of wrap this around a little bit and just stick this in my back pocket while I'm recording, which is nice. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is get the camera going. So hit record on that and it's actually, as a matter of fact, I'll show this now. It's focused in on my face right here, so I can get really close, kind of check myself in the screen, and it does a really good job of staying in focus. Now, as I back off, this is something that like a T5i or something like that's not going to do a very good job at, is this camera does a really good job at following me where I go. And this actually isn't even an STM lens. This is a lens that's not designed to do that. So it's really nice that I can do that with this. So at this point, what I'm going to do, normally I would move all of this equipment over here out of the way because it's in the frame, but I don't care because this is just for demonstration purposes. So at this point, I would do the intro for whatever the video is. Got a rogue piece of tape on there. So here we go. I like to clap. That gives me an audio marker. And I'll show how I actually edit all the audio in a minute and how I do the editing. But all right, let's get started here. Three, two, one. 
Hello everybody, welcome to Tech Uploaded. I'm Chris, and today we've got a pretty boring unboxing for you. That's right, it's a laser printer. Woo! And that'll be my first cut. So then what I'll do is kind of get everything situated, make sure I'm ready to go to actually open the box, and then I'll do the next take. I like to let the camera just run, because letting the camera run uh, is nice because I don't have to resync the audio, which I'll show how to do uh, when I do my quick video demonstration of this. So, the next step to actually do take two on the opening of the unboxing. So since I didn't break the recording with the audio, I actually don't have to resync anything. I can just keep going without having to do my clap. So here we go. All right, so I had an inkjet printer that I paid about $25 for, and man, that thing was driving me absolutely nuts. It would jam, it kept screwing up, and I just thought, you know what? How much can a laser printer really cost these days? I mean, seriously. It's how old is that technology? These things have been around forever. I think Apple pioneered it way back when, like the 80s, way back in the 80s. So I thought, all right, let's check some pricing. Forty-some dollars, I think, for this printer. So yes, I'm aware it's probably not going to have a very good toner. And I'm, you know, I'm probably going to have to pay another $30 for that, even getting like an aftermarket. But you know what? It's a laser printer. I don't really print anything in color at home, so I don't care. I just want something that's going to print and not give me any problems. So that's what I went for here. This had pretty decent reviews. So let's get into the box and see what this thing actually looks like. I got to say, uh, Amazon packed this really well. It was in a gigantic box that they shipped it to me in. So let me close my kind of dangerous knife contraption there and go ahead and open it up and take a look at what we got inside here. So I'm not expecting too much fanfare here. You've got your brother start here guy, so that's nice. Um, probably not a bad thing to hold on to, just so you know how to change your toner. At least read that once. I uh, got the driver disc, so if you don't have the internet, you're still living in the 90s, you got a way to get your drivers. And then of course, got to have a power cable, got to plug it in. All right, uh, then there's this mystery piece of, uh, well, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Hard to show you, that was just sitting on top. There's this weird like flap area, I'm not really sure what that was all about. Maybe there would be a secret under there. All right, now to do this, I'm probably going to need to set this box on the floor. So, All right, now at this point, this would be where I would do a cut while I'm taking it out of the box because this is loud and nobody wants to see my struggles. Look at that. Uh -oh. Neighbor's probably like, what's going on in there? That guy's kitchen's always really bright. I don't know what he's doing. All right, so now that I've got that out of the box, I just kind of turn it in a way that's going to make sense. Again, haven't made a cut yet, so I'm just going to keep going. I'll probably move this stuff out of the way, get it out of the frame, and then keep going. All right, so struggled a little bit with the box, getting it out, the really loud styrofoam on this thing, but uh, yeah. So we'll go ahead and pull that off on both sides. For that box. I have way too many boxes now, just so many boxes. Can I get that dumpster soon? Yes, they're supposed to recycle with the dumpster that I'm getting, so don't panic. All right, how do I get into this? Like unwrapping a Christmas gift. It's slippery. Really? I'm not seeing, aha, here we go. Not seeing a point of entry here. I'm sure this is very loud. Right next to the lavalier. All right, pull it out. There we go. Okay, so this printer is pretty straightforward. Uh, this is the TN420. For best results, only use Genuine Brother. It's not too heavy. Um, it's got a good feel to it, but it's not overly heavy. It is USB, so if you don't have a spare USB cable sitting around, make sure you get one for like $2. Don't pay ridiculous amounts for USB. Very, very beefy amount of silica gels in here. That was pretty impressive. What was the word permitted on this thing? That's pretty much all you need to know is the DPI. It's 2400 by 600 DPI, and I believe it's 24 words per minute, judging by the model number. Twenty four hundred by six hundred DPI, twenty four pages per minute black. There you go. That's pretty much all you need to know, and it's USB. So yeah, that's it. Uh, looks like I got a tab here that I'm supposed to pull. So exclamation point. Number one, remove tape. Okay. Number two, fold down front. All right. Guess you can't really see that. So I folded down the front, and now now I'm going to read this backwards. It says to uh, pull, 
the hell am I supposed to do here? There's a rubber band on it. Take off rubber band. All right, I can't read this backwards, guys. Remove rubber band. Pull this thing. Is that it? Okay, now I have to take out the toner. It says remove toner and shake. That's a little trick for getting extra toner, by the way. If you're starting to run low, your toner cartridge is a good shake. I gave away the secret. So yeah. So there it is, the HL22400 laser printer. Not a bad looking printer. Um, not the sexiest piece of hardware. I know you guys love when I use that word. But it'll get the job done. It's going to be sitting somewhere where it's not really all that noticeable. I can hook it up to USB, which is great, because I can plug it directly into my ASUS router, which allows me to do USB printing, which allows me to print from the family room, home theater PC, or my office, or my MacBook Pro, or MacBook Air. Get my MacBooks confused. They all look the same. So there it is. Um, if it doesn't work, I guess I'll let you know in the description, but I don't really see why it wouldn't. So fun unboxing, laser printers. Wow. Now I'll do my closing. <clears throat> All right, well, if you found this video helpful, you know the drill. Go ahead and do me a favor and click on that subscribe button. You can also follow me on Twitter. Follow the Twitter bird. I'm tech uploaded on Twitter, so go ahead and hit me up there. And as always, thanks for watching. And you know what? Don't be a stranger. All right, and then that's the closing. So you pretty much got to see it from start to finish. So I'll go ahead and do the edited version and I'll put it up now. Now I'm just gonna go turn off the camera and turn off the field recorder. So I have to unlock it. I see that I ran for eight minutes, 26 seconds. Turn off unlock. Go ahead and hit the record button on here. Stop the recording on here and now I'm back to the really crappy camera audio. I can untether myself. Now, one thing that you probably, you probably got a shot of crap right now. Sorry about that. <sighs> pick it up without hitting any buttons. One thing that you guys have probably noticed, I wear, when I'm wearing jeans on the weekend, I usually have them tucked in if I'm doing build videos or something like that. The reason I do that is so I can run the cable uh, and not have it dangling under my shirt. The shirt would get in the way and move the cable around a lot. It would actually create noise within the microphone. That's one of the nice things about using the Audio-Technica that I may actually go with is it's going to, let me turn off the camera here. <laughs> It's going to allow me to not have to worry about noise so much, so I'll be able to just keep it under my shirt and then not worry about the cable quite as much. So that's going to be nice. But yeah, there you go. That's the, that's the setup. That's how I do it. So hopefully you guys found that helpful. Kind of a weird thing to put in a vlog, but yeah, why not? You only live once, right? What is it YOLO? All right, so now that I've got the audio and the video recorded, it's time to do my editing. So what I need to do now is get everything copied over where I need it to be so I can go into Premiere Pro, and then I'll show you kind of the different techniques I use to sync up the audio and the video and, and do some simple editing, and then I'll also show you what I do actually with Adobe Audition with the audio that I capture on the field recorder. So the first step is to go into my video folder and create a new one called TU Vlog Test. So I'll have that folder now, and then what I'll need to do is actually copy over uh, from my other folder because I've already got the video in there in TU Vlog 6. I need to grab this file because that's the actual file off of my SLR that I've already copied over and move it in here. So then I'm going to go ahead and call this video and then I'll create another one called audio and then I'll need to move over the audio. This is actually my SD card and that's going to be audio clip number three. We can verify and that. And then I'm going to record right next to the lavalier. Yep. So that's it. And move that there. Wait for it to copy over. And then dump that in audio. Dump that in video. And we're good to go. So now that I've got that, I'm going to go into my audio folder. And I can close out of this and go in and open this with Audition. And what I'm going to do here, actually, you can kind of see looking at the audio file, you can so scrub you through it and play it back. Opening of the unbox. What I need to do is a couple of different things here. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do, since I had some audio that I captured before that I didn't need, so put that back there. So I'm going to kind of catch. All right, so what I'm going to do now is get the. All right, so that's about where the audio file will be starting. So I can delete everything before that because I know where I actually started recording the video, where that's going to need to be. 
Now the other thing you'll notice is there's a lot of like peaks and valleys here, so you can there's a couple of different things you can do to level that out. And actually, you can really clearly see I like here the, the clap. clap. Thank you. So that me. was kind of my marker. So what I'm going to do now is if I only had this up here, that would mean I'm in mono, and you would have to do a fill left to fill the bottom. But since I did record in stereo, that's not a problem. I actually have a preset key that I I recorded and hit V, and it's going to do all of the different settings that I recorded and assign to this key automatically for me. And I have this saved as a preset. So now what essentially it did was it applied an EQ setting automatically that adds a little bit of bass and a little bit of treble. It's called, I think it's called like loudness. And it's a really nice one for vocals. And then it also did a normalization. Then it compressed it. So if you don't understand compression, go ahead and look it up. There's a lot of videos on YouTube about it that'll kind of explain it. But essentially what it does is it tries to take the lows and the highs and get them as close together as it can within a specified range so that it's not going from really quiet audio to really loud audio. It keeps everything kind of uh, nice and controlled and a little bit more consistent. And then after it did that, I went ahead and normalized it again. And see what so now I have this. Like. You'll see I'm kind of between like negative six and negative three. That's kind of where I want to be on that. So I'm just going to save that file, close that, and then go into Premiere Pro. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a new project, and I'm going to browse. It's going to default to whatever folder you were in before. So I was doing some work on this vlog before, so I'm going to switch over to my test. And I'm going to call the file the same thing as the folder, so I'm just copy and paste that. Now you notice I didn't have to set any sequence settings. You don't have to do that ahead of time in the Creative Cloud version of Premiere Pro. So now all I need to do is actually pull up my folder here and copy the audio and video folder into my little media viewer and it's going to give me an error message right here that says you know I can't you can't read this file it's fine that's just the one that it creates an audition you don't need it all right so then once you do that what you can do is go ahead and just open up your video and drag it in the area where your timeline would be and it automatically creates the timeline with the, the sequence uh, with the settings that you need so you can check your sequence settings and verify there it is 23.976 that is what my DSLR captures in so that's correct and then you'll kind of want to just listen to your video and kind of hear what you're saying at the beginning record on that so I'm looking for hit record on that so then you'll go over to your audio all right so what I'm gonna do now is get the camera going so hit record on that. All right, so I set it right there. So what I'm going to do is actually scrub back on the audio just a little bit. And then so hit record on that. Put an in point, hitting I, and drop that in there as well. So now we're going to be pretty close to where we should be on both of these. So then I like to bring my audio channels down a little bit just so I have a waveform available to me to look at. All right, so now looking at this, you can see that we're pretty darn close. We can actually look at the waveform and kind of tell just by looking at it exactly where we are with this. And then you really, if you clap like you're supposed to, it makes things a lot easier. Because now I see clap, clap. You can look at the two. So I'm going to bring this in just a little bit because I don't really care about any of this up here. That's going to be this area over here that I'm going to be worried about when we get to the video. So now I'm going to zoom in and just kind of bump things over, holding down alt and moving and then you'll see that those two are now lined up and you have to get them pretty close so there you go now it should be synced. Yo, I like to clap all right that gives me an audio marker now if you forget to put in an audio marker you forget to clap you can just play the Hi, video Chris, back. And today got a pretty boring unboxing for you that's right it's a laser printer Woo! so you just get that kind of lined up the nice thing about this version of Premiere <laughs> is it actually allows you to scoot things while you're live in the timeline Woo! So now I've got the audio synced up. So what I want to do is go back to the beginning here and unlink these two channels or the video from the audio and delete that and then move this up, making sure that arrow is there so you don't lose it. And then the next thing to do is relink these two together. So now essentially what I've done is I have replaced the audio that was recorded from the DSLR and put the field recorder audio in its place. So now that that's done, I can zoom back out a little bit and just kind of scrub through the video and find the area where I'm actually going to start talking. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tech Up. There you go. So I'm going to come in right about on that little bump, and then I can delete everything before it by holding down Shift and hitting Delete. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tech Uploaded. I'm Chris, and today we've got a pretty boring unboxing for you. That's right. It's a laser printer. Woo! All right. Then I can put my breakpoint there. So then essentially I'm just going to continue through doing this. So I'm going to scrub and then wait for me to pick it up again. I'm probably going to be, be my first to the cut. camera. So this is a little unusual. I normally wouldn't have this much to take out. And I'm just going to keep moving forward until I get to the next take. All right, so I have... All 
All right, and that's going to be about right there. And then again, I'm just deleting everything in the middle, and now it's going to make Woo! a nice jump. All right, so I had an inkjet printer that I paid about $25 for. So then pretty much at this point, you're just going to keep scrolling through. And then you'll know that there's a point where I actually unbox everything and I need to make it. So that's going to come up right about here. So what you want to do is kind of just listen and then find where it seems like a good place to be. A good place would be to make the cut. So I need to set this box on the floor. So all right, probably just cut it right there. And then we'll scrub through until I actually get the box out. And Again, haven't made a cut yet, so I'm just. All right, and then there's where I come back in. So take everything out in between. All right, so struggled a little bit with the box, getting it out, the really loud styrofoam on this thing, but, uh, and then you'll just keep going. And this is pretty much just, you know, the way I set this up and the reason I set it up this way, instead of doing in and outs on each individual clip and dropping them in the timeline that way, what I like to do is actually, since I'm syncing audio, just dump them all in. Now you have a couple different options as far as how you want to sync your audio. You can do it automatically now, um, actually using the time code that it, it can pretty much auto detect within Premiere. But I don't like to do that because sometimes it's off and sometimes it does some weird stuff and I've gotten really fast with the audio sync. So I prefer just to do it that way. All right, so now we're getting to the point where we need to do the closing. All right, so I'm going to dump it there and then I'm going to talk some more. Click on that subscribe. All right, so now I'm going to do my outro. Wow. All right, well, if you found this video helpful, you know the drill, go ahead. All right, then everything beyond that was extra. So at this point, I would actually go through and put in my graphics for my Twitter account because I call it out in here, and then also put my closing graphics down here, but that's a whole other deal, and I don't want to get into it now. This was just kind of a rough idea of how I edit. Now, the last thing to do on this before I would actually take this out for an edit is go in and maybe do some effects. So you can go into your effects over here. And then let's see, we'll do some video effects and we'll do color correction, fast color corrector. And I'll dump that in and then scroll over here so I can see what I'm doing and then go into the effects control. You can do an auto white balance and just like try to pick the whitest thing in the scene and then see what it does. Uh, it moved it a little bit, but for the most part I'm actually, I let the, uh, I let the camera, the 70Ds is fairly true to what or where it should be because I record everything on just neutral. So I like to bump that up just a little bit uh, and then I'm going to go through and actually probably dump this down to like 245 to brighten it up. <clears throat> Excuse me, and then do like 8 on that to, just to give it a little bit more of a contrast. It adds a slight bit of contrast to it. And then finally, I like to go in and actually do sharpen and blur. Now the reason that I'm... The auto white balance, I'm a little bit iffy on unless it really needs it because sometimes what it shows in Premiere and then what you actually get on the export can be a little bit different from each other. So I tend to... Avoid using it unless I really have to, and sometimes you do. Sometimes the camera just goes crazy on you, and you do have to use it. But I'm going to go ahead and add the sharpen effect here, and go ahead and do it about 12. Unboxing for you. Now you notice it sharpens right. things up just a little laser bit. laser printer. And then the nice part about this is since I'm pretty much standing in the same place this whole time, I can actually grab the fast color corrector and hit Control c to copy it, and then scroll through to all the other areas I hadn't applied it to, and apply that. And then also I can do the same thing for Sharpen. I don't really print anything in color at home, so I don't care. All right, so there we go. I applied both of those. All right, so now we're getting to the point where it's time to export the video. So what I'd like to do at this point is go in, and I use Control-M for the keyboard shortcut. And this is going to be really big because I normally I'm not exporting with this low of a resolution, so everything's set for my uh, 2560 by 1440, and I've got it down to 1080 for recording. And then I've got all my different um, you know presets here. So I've got my TU Vlog preset, which is actually at 30 frames per second, because that's what the Sony camera captures at. And I've got my standard export, which is my YouTube HD, using a variable bit rate at about 7 megabits per second, and then I have it at 23.976, just like the camera and the... Uh, sequence and then what I would do then is actually just click up here and go back and specify that I want to export this into the test file and then you would name it at that point down here and then hit export and there you go you have your video so 
Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, just kind of a quick run through. There's a lot more you can get into and you can get a lot deeper. You can really go in and you can start doing white balance on, you know, manually. You can really get into the color correction. You can spend as much time or as little time as you want to in post, really. And this was just a really rough run through of what I would do. Now, obviously, when I edit videos that are a little bit more involved, uh, for example, I'll actually open one for you. Uh, like, um, let's see here, we'll do the Maximus 7 Hero. When you go into something like this, you can see a lot more is going on now, uh, and there's a lot more to scrub through. This and this was just the board overview, so you know it, it really just it, it just depends how much time you want to spend. But uh, you learn Premiere Pro, even the basics of it, you can actually do quite a bit. All right, so there you have it. That's pretty much a rundown of how I would go through doing an unboxing. Uh, but the same principles would apply to any video I would do. Now the exception being. When I do build videos and things like that, I actually do like to keep like a little checklist uh, that I run through to make sure I'm getting everything, as well as kind of try to jot out what I'm gonna do, what kind of shots I might be looking for as I go, because those are a little bit more involved. The camera moves around a lot more. Uh, you know, something like an unboxing is really easy because I can just set the camera in one place. But I wanted to show that because it just goes to show you, you don't have to invest a huge amount of money to get started in making YouTube videos. You could get, um, you know, if you already have a decent camera, even a point and shoot that can do video, even 720p video, you can use that. Pick up an audio recorder. You can get like the Zoom, I think H1, uh, and then Tascam has an entry level one as well. They're like under $100 on Amazon and other websites like B&H Photo. You can get them really cheap, you know, relative to a field recorder. But having one of these things is a godsend. These things are so nice. Uh, they allow you to be untethered from the camera. They capture fantastic audio. The built-in mics on them are pretty darn good as well. So invest 100 bucks in that. That Giant Squid Lab, like I said, it's like 40 or 45 plus shipping. Uh, so for $150, if you've already got a decent camera, you know you can get in. Throw another 40 bucks or so in for the lights and you know shipping. 200 bucks, you can get an audio recorder, a lavalier mic, and the lights. And as long as you've already got a camera, you're good to go. If you don't, you can still pick up point and shoots that do fantastic video for around $100 to $150. So, you know, the barrier to entry doesn't have to be there. You know, just, you know, it's not it's not cheap, but it's not super expensive. A setup like the one I'm using is definitely a little bit more on the high side, but it's still nowhere near as high as I could go. I mean, this you can just keep going and going and going with this and keep growing. The camera I'm using is $1,000 and the lens is, you know, about $550. So there's... You know, 1550 plus I think another 200 plus the lights and everything. I mean, I'm just shy of 2000, but that doesn't mean you have to do the same setup. But, you know, again, I could also try to match people that have $20,000 setups and can do things in 4K. So, you know, it's not it's not so much about what you're using. It's about, you know, your content. So hopefully if you uh, are considering doing a channel, you'll give it a shot. And uh, hopefully this video is helpful. And of course, if it was... Please go ahead and do me a favor, click on that subscribe button, follow me on Twitter over at TechUpLoaded, and you know the drill. Don't be a stranger, check back soon.